Okay, 0.003 inches times 25.4 is about 0 0.076 millimeters. This is getting pretty old. I do a lot of converting between metric and uh, inches with the work that I'm doing because I live in the US and you know, I'm constantly going back and forth between things that I purchase that are metric and things that I purchase that are in inches. It gets even worse sometimes when I have designs that have both metric and inch components within the same design. So because of that, you know, when I'm not working in CAD, I have to do the conversion by hand. And I was inspired by a project that John Saunders at NYC CNC did called the Imperializer. I wanted to see if I could do something better. With the Imperializer, you have to toggle a switch between which way you're converting, in other words, two inches or two metric. And I wanted to see if I could build a conversion device that didn't require a toggle switch. So this is what this is about. This is gonna be a different episode. And one of the things I'm gonna to try to do in this episode is give you an idea of what the software development process is like in terms of how you go about building some software without getting into the nitty gritty details of the software itself. In the exit, you know, at the end, I will give a few details for those people who are curious. But let's go now to the, my, my desk and start working on this project. This is what my projects typically look like uh, when I first start them. This is enough for me to be able to do the initial testing and getting everything working. But in terms of interacting it for the next level after I get something showing up on the screen, which isn't very interesting, I want something a little bit better. For that, I 3D printed a front panel uh, that has some screw holes in the back. And this will hold the keypad in place and then the screws will go through here and hold the screen in place. Oops. I just uh, <clears throat> discovered one thing, which is I didn't uh, make space for that. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and uh, let's see. Actually, let me plug it in and make sure that I know which is right side up. Okay, so it means it needs to go in this way. So yeah, the backlight is definitely in the way. So I'll just go ahead and uh, butcher this. Definitely not the uh, neatest job, but you know, that's what happens when uh, you do the first version. Sometimes you discover things like that and you just have to roll with it. And actually now that I realize it, <clears throat> I only need two screws right now to hold this in place. Okay, so if I plug that back in, you can see this is a much better system for being able to test uh, from here on. Uh, the code doesn't, isn't there to actually do anything yet. Uh, but this is a lot easier than trying to hold the screen and the other things in place. Uh, and then once I get it all done, I'm going to use a circuit board smaller than this, so I'll be able to fit this all into a, a case. And I'll do that later. But the first thing I'm going to do is uh, actually do some more work on the software so that it actually does something interesting. One of the things you can do with designing an interface for a new device like this 
is to use markups, uh, which is what this is here. This doesn't actually do anything. You can see pressing the keys doesn't do anything, and that's because all the software is doing right now is displaying this string on the screen, nothing else. This is useful because it means that I can do things like try this out on my wife, who is not a machinist, to see if she gets the concept right away. And the idea is that you type in a number. In this case, what I'm doing is pretending that I typed in 0 0.01. So at the top, it's assuming that the input is inches. At the bottom, it's assuming it's millimeters. And then the right side, it gives you the, the conversion to the other unit. So she got this right away which means this concept has a lot of potential. I think it's going to work just fine, but now I can go to the next step of making it so that the buttons interact with it and you can actually use it. Software development is an iterative process and I start with an end goal, which is what I showed you before. That end goal sometimes changes as I'm building something, but the next step is I wanted to make uh, part of that goal reality which is what I have here. So what I've gotten working so far, and this is all that's working, is I can type in a number, and you can see the number shows up here, but of course there's nothing over there. And then the other thing is I can press this to clear the display. I now have it supporting decimal numbers, so I can type in like 0.01, that works, 12.5, that works as well. There are some special cases that I needed to deal with. So for example, if I typed a bunch of zeros, I did not want to have that fill up with zeros. Uh, so then if I type something like that, it works. The other special case is if I type a bunch of zeros and then I type a single number, I want to replace that with a zero because there's no reason to have zero five in there because it's the same thing as five and it just takes up extra space. Those little special cases are what make the difference between something that feels right with something that feels odd. And it's the type of thing that I really enjoy trying to figure out and implementing in interfaces like this. After a few more hours of work, not on the same day, I have it working. So if I type in 0 0.003, which is what we had in the intro, it converts that to millimeters. If I want to convert from, say, 0.1, uh, millimeters to, to inches, I can do, do 0.1, and that gives me the conversion. So this is a lot faster. One thing I don't like it, of course, is that these are not labeled correctly. I'd really like to have a period and a clear. Uh, probably put some labels down here to remind myself. Not really sure how I'm going to do that. The other thing, of course, is that this is a bundle of wires, and we've got a pretty large circuit board here. But what I'm planning to do for the next version is switch to this circuit board, which you can see is a lot smaller. And that circuit board will be able to fit in the back very, very easily. Uh, probably like this, so that I can have this cord out the bottom. We'll figure things out. But I'm going to do that uh, in the future, which is to wire this all up and then design a smaller case that will fit this better. I realize this episode is a little bit different. I hope you enjoyed it, and you know I'm curious to find out what you think, so I'd love to see your comments below about it. Um, I did promise to say just a few things about um, this experience. So I've been doing embedded development, which is what it's called when you write code for one of those little circuit boards like I have. And I have been using uh, C and C++. If that means something to you, then you'll understand what that means. For this one, I wanted to try something different, so I'm using the Rust programming language. And what you see here is a result of about two weeks of work part-time, uh, so after hours, after work, and uh, on weekends. And uh, it, it was a very enjoyable experience. Uh, I'm getting used to the language, but there are a lot of things about it that I really love. I do have some other embedded projects I'll probably work on uh, the future, and I do want to turn this into a version that has a case. So let me know if you're interested in seeing a follow-up where I put it into a case. Um, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below, and if you're already a subscriber, you might want to click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when I have new videos. See you next time.